James here, and for today's video I got a knife review. Now there are plenty of knife reviewers out there on YouTube or online. I'm not interested in being just a 100% knife reviewer. There's plenty of gentlemen that are talented and they, they're good at that. But every once in a while I do want to review equipment that has worked for me. Now I am not a professional so these things aren't sent to me, I'm not sponsored. These, th these are things I have bought with my own money and I've used them out in the field so I want people that are looking for you know encouragement and you know they're looking for the right equipment to get started I'm gonna point them in the right direction and this has worked for me so this is the Mora Bushcraft Black beautiful beautiful knife now for my first review I talked about the Mora Companion some guys they don't they they don't feel safe with this knife they don't trust it they feel it's too light it's too thin for heavy outdoor use so recently about two three years back Mora decided to make something stouter more rugged and you can tell it is a thicker blade and is just more designed for the bushcraft and heavy use outdoors so this is definitely a more stout blade and I'm just gonna discuss this knife so let's just get the boring specs out of the way and then we'll move on with our testing so the Mora Black specifications are the blade length itself is 4.25 inches. It is 1 8 inch thick, which is a really great size for a knife. High carbon, like most Moras. Its overall length is 9.25 inches. And its weight is 5.4 ounces with the sheath included. Now the biggest difference from this Mora knife model from the older ones is the older ones, they didn't have a finished spine. They were, it wasn't squared. So you had to file it yourself as I did in my first video and many other people do so you can strike a ferro rod this one it's already squared so it's ready to go so it strikes beautifully not not just with the ferro rod but you can scrape things you know wooden shavings things like that to make fire now another thing to talk about is the sheath on this knife most more knife sheaths are okay at best they're not anything spectacular and it's not it's not too bad for the price you're paying a lot of them are just almost useless but this one they really knocked it out of the park this one has amazing retention like I said I've had this for over a year it's still tight this is not coming loose at all so it's just really good retention holds well and not only that but it has a swivel so it's somewhat like a dangler sheath so you attach this blade you run this part over your belt and as you're moving along doing your things it's not going to be jabbing into you. It's not going to be uncomfortable. Say I'm driving my truck, it moves, it swivels, and I like that. Okay, so let's get some reviewing done. Let's put it through a couple tests. So the first test is I'm going to process this large ground scroll that I just caught about an hour ago. Sorry, he's a little wet. I put him in ice. But I think that's very much missing from today's reviews. I don't want to hear, oh, this knife would be good at processing game. I want to see it in action. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to process this animal. From there, I'm going to process down this mesquite stump right here the small mesquite log and once I make, get this I'm gonna make a one stick fire from this once I get this fire going I'm gonna go ahead and cook this guy so not only do, does it show this knife like can it butcher is it pretty good at processing game but as well can it take some batoning some abuse can it uh, do some fine carving so I think that's a pretty well-rounded test for a blade okay so let's get started on this ground scroll the first thing we're gonna do we gotta hurry. He's already starting to stiffen up. I already, I got him barely about an hour ago, but uh, let's just get this started. I'm gonna wet him so it makes removing the fur easier. And I'll make an incision in his back. And I just wanna get this going. I'm gonna baton through his head and his arms next. So let's get that head out of the way. And this, I'm just gonna cut it. See? And this knife is perfect. If you notice, there is no dings or dents. This thing is still straight. This, that scanning grind is still holding. A lot of people say scanty grinds are, you know, they're they're really great for wood, but not necessarily great for skinning. I disagree. I think this knife is really good. And a perfect example is also the handle of this knife. It's just really comfortable. In fact, it is the most comfortable knife I have ever felt in my life. 
the knife in my belt right now is over four times as expensive as this one and it does not even compare to how nice this feels especially like you know i have guts i have you know there's water there's fluids body fluids and it just it's rubbery it feels great in the hand great handle great handle okay so this guy i removed the skin already i mean i'm sorry the fur it's about time we start gutting him so i'm gonna make a cut up here in the cap over here the gut cavity i gotta hurry because flies are starting to pick up her scent that's the last thing i want so i'm cutting through and look how that's slicing that slices beautifully okay and i'm gonna remove all this all these intestines these are the parts you don't want i'm gonna open the ribs up to get to his heart and his lungs I'm just gonna baton through his pelvic bone. Oh man, I really wish I had a larger platform here, a larger log, but well, that's all I got. So we make do with what we got. And there you go. Get rid of that nasty stuff. And he's pretty much ready to go. I understand he's very dirty right now, so I'm gonna pour some water on him to clean him. And then from here, once I clean him up a little bit, I'm gonna put him away, and then I'm gonna make one stick fire once again with this knife. And as, as you saw, it performed admirably. And now we're gonna get this little trunk of mesquite, and I'm gonna go ahead and make a one stick fire so we can get cooking our food. So let's get started.
Okay, so I have plenty of feather sticks and small kindling from this mesquite pile right here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the mora black just shoots from the ferro rod. It just destroys it. It's a really great spine on it. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to deviate a little bit and kind of make it a little bit more interesting. So, this blade is a high carbon steel blade. We discussed that earlier. And as we all know, the high carbon is capable of throwing some uh, sparks from a flint rock. So, I gathered up nearby. I gathered up some something I can make a tinder bundle with, and I'm going to process this. And it's, I could easily just make a fire with the ferro rod. But let's make it more challenging for this knife because this knife is just acing all tests right now. So, I'm going to make a bit of a... I'm going to process this down for a little bird's nest. I'm going to get some char cloth and I'm going to strike my knife with a piece of flint rock. So, just, just to see how that works out. Here's my makeshift tinder bundle right here. I'm going to get a piece of char cloth. If, if you don't know what char cloth is, I have a video on that probably about my fourth or fifth video and check it out it can it's a lifesaver and it's been an old cheat of woodsman for many many years so right in the middle where the egg would go in a bird's nest I have char cloth and I'm gonna strike the back of my knife with this rock see if we can get a spark No ferro rod, I just struck the back. Let's get this going. And we put these in here on here. And we got a fire using a rock, a flint rock, and the black the back of this knife. Okay, so we sharpened up this stick. Our fire's going. I'm I don't I'm not too worried about the large flames because I just want a bed of embers to cook my food but this guy's just about ready boom right over the fire Okay guys, well that's the conclusion of this video. We are, we're already cooking up our dinner here. As you saw, it processed game. It made a one stick fire. And not only that, not only can it strike a ferro rod great, but even using just a flint rock, chert, quartz, any natural material like that, a rock that's seven or above in the scale, strike it down. And because of the high carbon content, you are able to make a fire. So, I mean, even if this is all I had and I lost my backpack, whatever the case may be, this thing is an amazing blade. And in my opinion, once again, my opinion, it's the greatest factory made knife in the world as of right now. It's just amazing. I have, I happen to have a custom made knife right here, an LT Wright GNS, that was four times more expensive. And I, in all honesty, although I love this knife, I think these guys go head to head. It's a great, a great, great knife. So, with that being said, this knife is $40, going on 50, depends on where you shop. Ragweedforge.com is actually a really good good place to shop for knives. And some people that are not knife guys or outdoors guys, they may say that's too much for a knife. Well, you get what you pay for. And you don't have to, but keep in mind, it's, you know, there's some, some of our vehicles, you know, 
that's not even enough for a full tank of gas or a video game or whatever the case may be. So save up your quarters and you can get something like this. And as you saw, we'll just let our actions do the talking. So like I said, I'll let you guys go. And if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, give me a like, and I'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go out and get your boots dirty.